So my first question is to Prime Minister Harper. How do we solve the problems of the Middle East? Okay, sorry. And since it's a, it, it's a rapid fire round, you, you, we need quick answers. Well, tough for me to, to solve this one quickly, Samir. I, I also have to say, just before I begin, um, you know, in Canada, uh, we just suffered a tremendous loss of life uh, as a consequence of the Iranian action shooting down Ukrainian Airlines flight, and this is obviously in my country right now. It's a subject of, of great um, sorrow, and I want to give my condolences to all the families affected. I think it's also the subject of, of great anger. I, I don't think any of us believe that Iran would have deliberately shot down an aircraft, but the very fact that Iran, believing such a thing could happen, would be allowing normal civilian traffic, I think, tells you something about the nature of that regime and its priorities. And I, you know, I do believe we need to see a change in Iran if we are going to see peace in the Middle East. I see an increasing number of states in the region, um, Israel that I'm, I'm close to, the, certainly the Sunni Arab uh, monarchies, others who are increasingly trying to work together and see a common future and common interests. And you have this one actor that quite frankly is uh, you know, based on religious fanaticism and regional imperialism, and as I say, as a friend of the Jewish people, frankly, an anti-Semitic state. And I think if somehow, if there's is there any way through the protests in Iran or the consequences of this that Iran could go on a better trajectory, I think that would be very core to resolving the problems of the Middle East, certainly not resolve them all overnight. But I think without a, ver a change in the nature of the government of Tehran, the Middle East will continue to be in turmoil. Prime Minister Harper, irrespective of the politics of your time, and let's move to another geography now. You and your fellow leaders at that moment were seen as champions of the whole idea of a transatlantic relationship, a liberal order that was rooted in that region. Are we seeing the fraying of that relationship itself? Do you believe the liberal order that you were promoting so vociferously is suffering because the relationship across the pond is no longer holding valid for the frameworks that you created. So I think in retrospect, there's been some fraying of that probably since about the year 2000. Um, one of the things I think the end of the Cold War did was uh, broke down to a large degree a, a common sense of mission of the Western allies. Now, I don't think that's going to disappear entirely. Because the reality is that in this great and complex world that is in a lot of turmoil, um, on both sides of the Atlantic, we fundamentally share values, we share economic structures, and we share uh, macro security interests. So I don't think they will disappear uh, completely. I, I do think there is a permanent shift in Washington. Obviously, there are some shifts that are peculiar to this administration, but I think the sense that the United States will prioritize its own interests more strongly in the future and be more opportunistic about its alliances, I think that's probably uh, here to stay. Um, but look, I think the great challenge we have in, um, in liberal democracies, in, in Western democracies these days, is coping with uh, political protests in our own countries, which has arisen, I think, primarily because of a combination of new technology, the uneven distributional impacts of globalization, and rise of nationalism. And I think these are things that creative leaders will learn to accommodate. And uh, you know, I think the great strength of Western, of, of democratic societies, is that they, they are often wrong, but over time they correct errors. So I think to the extent we're seeing some things now that are taking us off the path we've been used to, I think, this will cause um, you know, adjustments in leadership and we'll, we'll learn to cope. And I, I still believe that in the long term, liberal democracy is really where the future is. And it's what most people aspire to.